Hey, this is Frank Yosa, CEO of Ketone Aid, and today I want to talk about ketones in your blood, how long they last. I get that question all the time. But before I start, this is a little bit of uh, two months into COVID, I had an attack with, you know, some mail order hair stuff. Um, so yeah, you can see a little bit of roots starting to come in. Anyhow, so people often ask, hey, how high do my ketones need to go? And, you know, what is the lifespan of the ketones in the blood? So there's a lot of papers that will show how long the ketones will last. The peak tends to be about 45 minutes. And many people talk about, oh, well, how long does it get out of your system? And do I need to re-up again, you know, every hour if I want to keep the ketones sustained? So the first comment I want to make is I don't think you need to make the ketones sustained. That's kind of, that's more the diet. If you have the diet, you'll, you might have a more of a sustained release of ketones. But with exogenous ketones, you drink it, it goes up and then it goes down and people think that they need to have the ketones high but what I like to say is it's not the ketones in the blood that does anything that's what people misunderstand that just happens to be the easy detection mechanism of hey you do a blood test not a urine test I just got a call yesterday with some someone saying uh, you know it didn't work this and that what spoke for about a half an hour and then I got a text message and he mentions urine strips I was like oh no 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 it's got to be blood um, and we, you know, there's other videos that can go over that. But the ketones in your blood, they don't do anything in your blood. It doesn't make your blood more red, doesn't make it flow easier, doesn't do any of that. So it's when it leaves your blood and starts going to different places, like to your brain or to your muscles, that it starts to do something. And then that's when it can last multiple hours. There was a recent brain study, shortcut on ketonaid.com slash brain, where they actually were able to detect the ketones in the brain. and I think it either peaked at 90 minutes or they stopped testing at 90 minutes, but it was still in the system well past the blood. And that's consistent with it leaves your blood and then goes to your brain, your muscles, mitochondria um, throughout the body. And people say that they subjectively feel something for about four or five hours. So oftentimes people will take it twice a day, once in the morning and then once in the afternoon. Now, as far as how to take it in the morning, well, it depends what your goal are, what your goal is. Um, some people, it's more convenient to take it first thing in the morning, and you could do that, but I learned this trick from, I don't know if it was Tim Ferriss or Dave Asprey with coffee. You don't want to drink coffee first thing in the morning. You want to actually wake up with water. You want to wake up, get up, and then a half an hour, hour later, then take coffee. Coffee's a stimulant. We'll talk about that in a second. But then you take the coffee to take yourself up. So you want to go from waking up at 70, 80% and then get up to your baseline 90, 100%. And then you can take ketones. It'll be a little bit more effective uh, an hour or two hours after waking up. But then some people, if they insist on taking breakfast, then it's a little bit tricky because you don't want to take the ketones and then just eat 45 minutes later. That kind of defeats the point because the ketones will be in your blood. But the moment you eat any food, even keto food, your blood glucose is going to spike and it's going to interfere with letting the ketones do their thing. So either you can use it to skip breakfast or try to have uh, a couple hours on, on each side. So no food on both sides. So breakfast, if you have it at seven or eight, then you want to wait for ketones at 10 or 11 and then maybe postpone your lunch to a one or two o'clock. And then some people like to take it a second time between the lunch and dinner uh, during that uh, sundowning time where the body starts to fade at three, four, five o'clock. Taking it then, people have found they can kind of bring them just back up to normal, make them feel like they did at, at 10 a.m. So that's it with the ketones in your blood. Uh, some people also have said to me, hey, I've been doing ketones uh, a ketogenic diet for for years and uh, someone told me that I needed to be in this certain range whether it's 1.0 2.0 3.0 and they swear that they're eating the exact same foods but their ketone numbers in the blood are lower and I've assured them that you know they need to do more research on the topic but uh, the longer you're in keto the lower your numbers will be and it's counter you know counterintuitive we're talking you know one year two years we're not talking about one week versus week two and what happens is it, it's the MCT transporters, not MCT oil. It's called uh, MCT transporters, which shuttle the ketones from your blood to where they need to go. If you have more transporters, your numbers are going to go down faster or stay lower, but they'll just be feeding where it needs to go faster, which is not a bad thing. But that doesn't mean that after multiple years, you have to eat a higher and higher percentage of fat just to sustain 
you know, those ketone levels. And some people have turned to exogenous ketones saying, hey, I used to be at 2.0, 3.0, and now I'm only at one. I better eat exogenous ketones in order to, you know, get back up to that too. Well, I don't really think that's necessary. If you want to take the exogenous ketones to get that extra one millimolar bump, that's fine. But just understand that your body's, your brain, your muscles are getting the same amount of ketones as they previously did, even though your blood ketone numbers might show up a little bit differently. And it's kind of funny with the ketone ester. Some people, you get both sides. You have people saying, uh, glucose-based people saying, oh, I can't use ketone esters because I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not on the ketogenic diet yet, or I'm going to start next week and then I'll take the ketones. And like, no, the, the ketone ester was actually designed to not have to do a ketogenic diet. Now, it's significantly better if you do a low glycemic diet, if you don't have those glucose spikes, it'll be better, more effective, more cost effective, but it's, you don't have to be fully keto. You don't have to be keto at all, but uh, the more on the spectrum that you are closer to keto, yes, the less you can use and the more beneficial uh, people might you know, notice. But then you know, the keto people will say, oh, well, I'm already making ketones. So if I'm already making ketones, I don't need to take it exogenously. But that's exactly like a glucose-based athlete saying, oh, no, no, my, I ate plenty of carbs last night and I don't need to have a gel pack right before sleep because, you know, I already have a lot of glucose in my system. No, it's just an exogenous form, just like a glucose-based person. It'd just be an extra uh, energy source. So um, I would say about 60, 70% of the people that use our ketone ester are already low carb or keto, but there's a good amount that, that aren't. And I am trying to push them into, you know, lowering their sugar consumption as well, because it's two parts of the equation. It's lowering the sugar consumption and increasing the ketones. So you can just do one and do the ketone ester, but you get so much more impact and just benefit with health and nutrition and longevity and, and decreasing the other side. I even tell people to do this part first, like just stop with the, what I say is fruit, rice, bread, pasta, fruit, and then you can watch a half an hour discussion on why I repeated fruit twice, because fruit will skyrocket your blood glucose and uh and it just just for people that are trying to get more ketones in their system if you're a raw vegan and you're eating a bunch of fruit and you're fine you're not having energy problems then great then you know i don't need to incorporate ketones but if you're trying to uh get more of that you know ketone system flowing you really want to be cutting out the fruit and high glycemic stuff all right so my email is frank at ketonaid.com make sure you subscribe i got a lot of content on here that you won't see on on any other videos. I don't look at other videos and get ideas for posts. So you'll find things that are completely different and go through the history of older videos and I'm sure there'll be comments uh, or posts of stuff that you haven't seen anywhere else. And let me know what you want me to talk about. I can, you know, always looking for new things to talk about. Thanks.